In part one of our series on dyslexia, we introduced Felix Karayuki, an 11-year-old dyslexic boy. In part two, you will meet more kids suffering with this disability. Reporting on dyslexia has truly been difficult. Many people refuse to comment for an interview, and many parents would not allow us to show their dyslexic children on the camera. As we continue to tell this untold story, you will see that there are solutions for overcoming dyslexia. Phyllis Muni Karayuki is on her way to Dagoretti. In Dagoretti, she meets her twin sister, Nancy Muni. Nancy teaches at a primary school. But Nancy is no ordinary teacher. She's been trained in special education and is able to address students with specific needs. Students like Dennis Nguda, Joseph Ngwa, and Samuel. Their problem mostly is seen in essay writing. You might, get, you might not notice much difference in objectives, English objectives, but when it comes to essay writing, you can't comprehend what they have written. These students are dyslexic. They cannot read or write very well because their brain has difficulty processing letters. Young students find it hard to deal with the condition and classmates sometimes make fun of them. They always tell me that I repeat and they always laugh for me. Why do they laugh at you? Because I always not spell good. Here at the New Highlight School in Dagoretti, Nairobi, Nancy Muni advocates for students who have shown dyslexic characteristics. Nancy understands dyslexia, but most teachers do not. The teachers don't even want to look at their essays, because after all, I know what will do a right. I know what, is the, what Joseph is going to write, so it's fine that even when I'm marking, or when teachers are marking, these put them aside and they, they don't want to, okay, they, they, they might want to help but they don't know how because they haven't even understood the problem the, 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 the child is having. Our opponent, opponent, opponent. Stephen has a severe case of dyslexia and all his teachers are aware of his challenges. Most of the letters like B, sometimes uh, he write it like D and D like B. Sometimes you look at him and he looks worried, shy, since the others are able to write. It's like he asks himself, why me? But I try to encourage him. Okay. Dyslexia is genetically inherited, meaning that it runs in the family, and it seems to be more common in boys than in girls. Nancy and her sister Phyllis both have sons with dyslexia. Both women noticed that their sons were performing poorly in reading, and both women decided to do something about it. Okay, when I went to college, and uh, I had noticed something different with my son. It happens that I taught my son nursery school, that is preschool, and uh, standard one and standard two, and you see I could teach other children perform very well. And my son is not doing well in, in reading. In fact, he read when he was in class three. So was, I got concerned. I decided I'm going to see what is wrong with what, 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 what he, the problem he has. We worked with my sister, whose son is the same. And uh, we learned so much from internet. I felt good because at least I identified the problem. And I therefore would want to share with the parents because once you have identified a problem, it's now easy to find a solution. That's why Phyllis takes the time to teach her sons reading skills. Sisal is a hard fiber from which But dyslexia is something that 11-year-old Felix deals with on a daily basis. He attends Carmelville Primary School. Sometimes I believe I'm not able to read and I just feel uncomfortable. 
Felix's English teacher met Felix when he was in class four and is still teaching him in class six. Felix is dyslexic. He tends to, he doesn't differentiate the difference between B and D, P and Q. When it comes to reading, he doesn't differentiate on the double letter words, for example. Even when he goes to spell the word with a double letter word, a word like commemorate, connection, you find him skipping the double N on the connection and double M on the commemorate. Now Eunice knows about dyslexia because Phyllis came to the school to talk with the teachers about the disability. I heard about dyslexia when he was in class four. That's when, after meeting the mama, that's when she told me about it. I had not known it before. She's a very good mama. We talked, she enlightened me about Felix, and she even went ahead to give us a lesson so that we can be able to handle him in class. Phyllis continues to educate parents and teachers about dyslexia. She even tutors children in her home using various methods to help them learn to read and write. But Phyllis did not always know about this condition. She learned more about it from Manisha Shah, who was a trained specialist. Shah said she met Phyllis two years ago. Phyllis was really desperate to get help for her son. He is now 11 years old and uh, he wasn't doing well in the government school and um, she felt she knew that there was some problem. Shah received her training in England where she learned to use the Davis method. The method teaches that dyslexic children need to learn actively. That's why she uses games and toys to teach. This will help them to focus on the words. These dyslexics are three-dimensional thinkers and letters are two-dimensional so they're trying to uh, get a picture of that word. So in, in other words, they're trying to shift the letters upside down all the way up. So when they're really reading the page, uh, you'll see that they, they feel the letters are moving. Shah and Phyllis have made efforts to try to help parents understand that their dyslexic children are not stupid, nor are they lazy. Shah is the creator of the website Dyslexia Africa. With a newly acquired office space for the new dyslexia organization Kenya, Phyllis can now fulfill her goals. First, we want to promote awareness to teachers. Uh, the reason is because the teachers are the ones who interact with the children at first when they learn, they go to school, and dyslexia is easily identified in school and they are the ones who call children bad names, uh, slow learners, uh, dumb, stupid, such words. So you want to demystify dyslexia and help teachers identify the dyslexic children in class and apply the, the multisensory methods of teaching. Phyllis registered the Dyslexia Organization Kenya this year as a nonprofit. The chairman, Dr. James Mutiti, is also the head of the Literature, Language, and Linguistics Department at Egerton University. Not many uh, dyslexia organizations have been conceptualized across the globe. There is always, you know, the Dyslexia UK organization, and uh, uh, of course, there are pockets of uh, dyslexia associations in different places, but it would seem that um, the idea or the, 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 the problem has actually always not been considered as a very important problem. And perhaps parents of dyslexic children just need to know that their children can still be very successful. What do these celebrities have in common? Well, Winston Churchill, Whoopi Goldberg, Albert Einstein, Muhammad Ali, and many others all have or had dyslexia. And maybe dyslexia is not a disability, but is a gift. It's like a coin. Um, the picture thinking way 
uh, has two, I, two areas, like it's positive and it's negative. The positive is that they're very creative, they're very artistic, uh, they're three-dimensional thinkers, they think out of the box, but they have problems in reading, writing, maths, handwriting and all those areas. So we have to try and you know, overcome that problem. It is becoming very uh, uh, obvious that dyslexia is something that uh, needs to be treated and considered by the common folk. Maybe in due time, dyslexic children will no longer have to face the shame, the embarrassment, and the stigma, so that one day Joseph can become a mechanic, Dennis can become a doctor, and Felix can become an engineer. Do not be, do not listen to other children, keep on reading, and don't stop, don't give up. No one knows just how many children in Kenya are suffering with dyslexia. But the fact remains, dyslexic children face constant embarrassment. How long will they suffer in silence? For N20, I'm Chika Odua.